It's not you, it's me. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome in to this weekend edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked on Cap. So more news is starting to flow in about what was ultimately behind the mutual uh, se- separation between Brian McClellan and Peter Laviolette and the Capitals and what that all meant. Um, and this was something that was brought uh, up by Tarek El-Bashir. And he had a piece out there saying that it was actually Peter Laviolette that wanted the meeting and uh, that uh, he ultimately wanted to hit the free agent uh, market so he, you know, he could have an opportunity to coach somewhere else. Per reports, Peter Laviolette requested a morning meeting with Brian McClellan where he told the Caps he wanted to part ways. His three-year tenure in D.C. ended uh, on a rough season, all things considered. And, you know, we could go back and forth about you know, how much of it was his fault, how much of it was the fact that there was a myriad of injuries. But what the fact remains is, is that Brian McClellan and the Caps and Peter Laviolette have mutually parted ways and what that means for the Caps going forward. And, you know, it's a bit of an interesting thing you hear oftentimes in life, if you ever break up with a girlfriend or a boyfriend, whatever the case may be. And you'll tell that, that you'll tell them that, you know, you want to break up. And they'll look at you and go, that's funny that you bring that up because I want to break up with you too. Let's just say it was mutual. Kind of the same thing here. I ultimately don't think that it was a mutual thing. It is interesting that uh, Peter Laviolette was the one that brought it up first. I guess the other side of the coin of that argument was is maybe they wanted to wait until breakdown day and you know they conducted all the interviews and then you know make the decision but what what we do know on facts is that peter laviolette requested the meeting he said you know that he would like to part ways and we know that brian mcclellan said well we kind of want to go in a different direction too so it is interesting i guess the truth lies somewhere in the middle um, as they say in the song here so it is uh, interesting to see what happened there Pierre LeBron wrote on Twitter, this is as much about the veteran coach wanting to hit the the free agent market and bet on himself as it is the team also wanting a new voice behind the bench. And, you know, the common complaint that has been set out there is that this team wants to get younger and it wants to get faster and why there was this reluctance in Peter Laviolette to want to get younger. Um, you know, and it's just certain coaches are that way. Barry Trotz was kind of the same way about that as well. For the team twos, for the team, two first round exits and a playoff miss simply wasn't good enough. Even with all the injuries to key personnel that piled up over the past two seasons, there were also concerns about Lavi's reluctance to integrate young players into the lineup and his inability to get high price veterans Evgeny Kuznetsov and Anthony Mantha to perform this season. And that's one of the things that I spoke about was. Um, You know, there is a belief out there that maybe Evgeny Kuznetsov isn't as bad as we think he is. Maybe Anthony Mantha is not as bad as we all think. Maybe it was just the coach. Maybe it wasn't Peter Laviolette utilizing those players the right way. I think a lot has changed. You know, I think that there is still the possibility the Caps move on from Kuznetsov and Mantha, but I don't think that it's necessarily a for sure thing like it was uh, when uh, Peter Laviolette was still the coach here. There might be the belief that we know that Kuznetsov has, you know, the potential of being a top center in the NHL. Do we want to move him on to another team and watch him, you know, just kill it on another team when the whole time it was just Peter Laviolette's systems that didn't really work with Kuzi? An interesting thing to think about. The same goes for Mantha. 
Mantha, I'm not so sure about, but but potentially. Maybe they misutilized Anthony Mantha and they didn't put him in the right situations. Maybe they will give these two guys one more look next season. I guess, you know, I'm not saying that is going to happen, but, you know, that has been something that has been spoke about for quite some time is that maybe it wasn't proper utilization. So some interesting things ahead. For uh, Lavulette, he couldn't have pl been pleased about going into the campaign as the lame duck or with the fact momentum on an extension stalled early in the season and the talks never restarted. It's also possible he sensed the direction things were headed and simply wanted to expedite the process. Listen, he knew that there was probably 0% chance that he was going to get a new deal just based on the fact that this team hasn't missed the playoffs since 2014. And we know what happened with Adam Oates, that the chance of him coming back to this team we're next to none. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, he wants to put himself out there. I think that Peter wants to coach somewhere else in the NHL. Of course, it's one of his strong suits, the winningest U S born coach, uh, and has the eighth most wins of all times. So I think there's another team that would like to pick up a flyer on him and, uh, see what he has, uh, you know, as a potential, we know that, uh, Dallas Akins in, um, in Anaheim, you know, we know that there's a vacancy there. I don't really think, you know, that Peter would want to go to that dumpster fire out there, but you know, I guess, anything is possible. Hiring LaViolette's successor is the first decision McClellan must take as a critical offseason gets underway because if the previous six months underscored anything about the Caps as constructed, it's this. Substantive changes are required. They must get younger and faster, even if it means making some tough decisions on fan favorites this summer. And one of the things I'll talk about a little bit later here is the fact that this could potentially be make or break for Brian McClellan. And I'll talk about that a little bit later that we know what happened. You know, they moved on from Barry Trotz for Todd Reardon. Todd Reardon didn't go, didn't go so well. Then they all moved on to Peter Laviolette. And we know that Peter Laviolette didn't get the results. So uh, at a certain point, Ted Leonsis and Dick Patrick and the ownership trust, they're going to look at Brian McClellan next and say, maybe he's not the right guy for the job. See what I'm saying there? Because maybe... He doesn't have what it takes in the tank to be the GM of this team. I mean, he has some good firepower out there, Ovechkin and Oshie and Backstrom and all these players. Why is he not getting the results? Uh, so definitely some interesting things that lie ahead for the Capitals uh, in this offseason. Uh, so definitely, you know, interesting times for Caps fans and the organization. All right, so after the break here, we will talk about what's next and what it means for Brian McClellan and ultimately what it means for the Capitals. We'll talk about that next. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits right the first time. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only exclusions apply All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Stay tuned to Locked On Capitals. As we know, I've been talking about this whole off season about, you know, who are the untouchables and what players should they move on? And next week, I will continue that. I have Roman Stubbs on the show as we talk about this season and the coaching change. And we'll also go over all the different interviews and that kind of thing. So make sure and subscribe to Locked On Capitals so you can be in the know uh, when news breaks. But getting back here to Peter Laviolette, Brian McClellan, and the Caps mutually parting ways. It is interesting. Three names that immediately come to mind are AHL Hershey head coach Todd Nelson, Tampa Bay assistant coach Jeff Halpern, and Toronto assistant Spencer Carberry. Um, and Spencer Carberry is an interesting one. It is one of the guys that I think the Capitals believe got away from them. As we know, he moved on to Toronto. Maybe they will try to right that wrong and have Spencer Carberry be the next head coach. 
maybe, you know, Jeff Halpern is also intriguing uh, to me, as we know, uh, you know, a native of the area. And also uh, the fact that he has a pretty good track record in Tampa. So it is interesting. Uh, maybe there's, a, you know, a lot of other options that we're not thinking of, but it is an interesting time uh, for the Caps. And I think that this next coach uh, definitely is going to be one of the ones that uh, he's really going to have to step up here. Nelson has led the Bears to the top of the AHL's Atlantic Division in the first season. He's uh, intimately familiar with the Caps pipeline, which includes top prospects Connor McMichael, Hendrick Slapier, and Vinny Iario. Nelson, 53, also has some head coaching experience. He was promoted to Edmonton's top job during the 14 15 season, writes the Athletic here. So I do like the fact that he has that intimate knowledge of Connor McMichael and Hendricks Lop here and these young players. That is one of the things that we oftentimes hear is that we need to get younger and we need to get faster. Maybe that would be just what the doctor ordered, uh, you know, a head coach that doesn't have this reluctance to want to get younger. Jeff Halpern, of course, is a native of Potomac, Maryland, and a former Caps captain. And he has spent the uh, past five seasons as an assistant coach for Tampa Bay, winning two Stanley Cups as a member of John Cooper's staff. Uh, so I do like Helpern. I do like what he has in the tank. I remember him playing for the Cap Capitals. And uh, I think, you know, if I had to pick a front runner, I would say it's Jeff Helpern. Number two uh, would be Spencer Carberry. Those are just the options that I'm aware of. Of course, there might be, you know, another person that, that we're not aware of. Carberry, meanwhile, has always felt like the one who got away. The 41-year-old was Hershey's coach from 18 to 21, but when he was not promoted in Washington, he was hired by Toronto. Like Nelson, he has the familiarity with players in the pipeline, such as McMichael, but he also has coached players who have graduated to the NHL roster, like Martin Faravari, Alexi Protis, and Alex Alexiev. Carberry also happens to be the architect of Maple Leafs' second-ranked power play, 26% in getting the Caps Ovechkin-fueled unit back into the top 10 figures to be one of McClellan's priorities. Um, it's one of the things I've spoke of on the show about, you know, the untouchables and that, you know, anything is possible. Could it be possible that Baxter moves on from this team? Is it possible that Oshie moves on from this team? I'm going to go ahead and say that certain things do change now, being that LaViolette is in the rearview mirror. Depending on who this next head coach is, um, I think there is the possibility that maybe they want to hold on to the Oshie and the Baxter and see if they can get um, this unit going. But the problem for me has always been we want to hear, we want to see McMichael. We want to see LaPierre. We want to see Vinny Iorio and these young guys. Who is coming out of the lineup so these new young players fit? So they're not all going to be able to stay. We know that because if McMichael goes in, if LaPierre goes in, those are at least two players that come out, have to come out of the lineup. Um, and we don't want them to be a healthy scratch, kind of like how they've been utilized so far. You know, McMichael and LaPierre, you know, especially this season, McMichael healthy scratched that definitely is going to stunt or stymie your growth. I think this season is going to have to be the season that the Capitals are all in on this youth movement and really give them a solid look. Um, you know, it, it just seems like they, they always make it to camp and then they get promoted out of camp into the big team. And then it just seems like they just, the role slowly diminishes down to nothing where they get uh, sent back to Hershey. So definitely uh, not the right thought process as far as I'm concerned. I think that if we're going to be all in on these young players, then let's be all in on these young players. Um, and uh, or if, you know, if they're not living up to potential, I'm not saying we need to be married to these guys like this season sucked because we were all in on McMichael and LaPierre. And that's why we're no, if they're not working out. We have have had a long enough look at McMichael and LaPierre if they're not living up to potential and who we think that they are. I'm not opposed to moving on from them and getting some pieces in here for some players that we know could help this team that are NHL ready right now. All right, so after the break here, we're going to talk a little bit more. I alluded to this earlier in the show about McClellan and what is at stake for him. I think, you know, it's an interesting time for him as well. I think that he is under the pressure more now than ever to pick the right head coach. What does it mean for Mac and for the Caps? We'll talk about that straight ahead. 
All right. Welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In this episode, we are talking about the coaching changes that surround the Capitals, right? We know that uh, yesterday on Friday, it was announced that Peter Laviolette and Brian McClellan and the Caps, they mutually parted ways. And then there was more word coming out from different insiders, most notably Tarek Elbashir and Pierre Lebron, talking about the fact that it was a meeting that was brought up and instigated by Peter Laviolette. He was the one that said he wanted a meeting and he said that he was the one that wanted out. And it's not too bold of a statement to make anyway, as his contract was uh, to expire here soon anyway. And I think that he wanted to get, you know, a head start on his next career in the NHL. I don't see Peter uh, leaving the head coaching position, but like I talked about off the top of the show, interesting times for Brian McClellan as well, as he is not immune to this. I know that oftentimes GMs don't get moved on. I mean, think about how long George McPhee was here, and then he just started to make uh, questionable decisions. I know that uh, McClellan is a little bit more endeared to the Caps as what he did, you know, as far as the Stanley Cup run and anything else. This story in The Athletic, if history is any indication, McClellan will cast a wide net in his search for a head coach. It would also make sense for him to take his time since desirable coaches could shake loose in the coming days as teams that didn't qualify for the playoffs make decisions and teams get eliminated in the first round opt to go in a different direction so it is it is going to to be interesting to see what direction do they wait uh, for the season to get uh, done here for one the next head coach will be a third mcclellan has fired and uh, excuse me for the next one the head coach will be the third mcclellan has hired and there's usually a limit to how many coaches a gm gets to choose before ownership starts wondering about the guy calling the shots uh, like i talked about off the top of the show so you got to think to a certain extent that uh, Brian McClellan is on a bit of a shorter leash here, and they're going to start questioning his judgment. McClellan has to get this higher right, and he surely knows it. Uh, as for Lavulette, he was nothing but professional until the end, even after the roster got hollowed out. Uh, McClellan acknowledged as much in a statement that read, we are grateful for Peter's leadership. Um, so, I mean, I we've kind of moved on from Peter Laviolette. Now we need to focus on the next head coach and the possibility that if this next head coach doesn't work out, that maybe that uh, Ted Leonsis will be looking for his next GM. Um, just take a look at what was done in Pittsburgh with the Fenway group there. There was zero tolerance for failure, a team that had a pedigree of making it to the playoffs all the time, missed the playoffs. So there is a lot at stake in the Capitals and and um, Brian McClellan, and they just need to take their time. And I don't think, you know, we I just listed earlier in the show, Spencer Carberry and Jeff Halpern and these kind of guys. Those are the guys that we know um, could potentially be available right now. But let's ultimately see what's behind the, uh, the other door here. You know, what's going to happen, like they talked about in this piece here, once the season is over. There's no rush here. Uh, we know that the Stanley Cup, you know, playoffs are ramping up here and the teams that are still in it, um, the, you know, they're head coaches. But, you know, there's the possibility that maybe some of those assistant coaches on those teams that are doing really well would be a good fit for the Capitals as far as a head coaching position is concerned. So definitely uh, some interesting times for the Capitals. I'm excited about this. I like change. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about the fact that they moved on from Peter Laviolette, but I understand the thought process and it would have been difficult to go into next season feeling optimistic uh, if, you know, for a, a couple things, if it was Peter Laviolette as head coach next season, it would have been difficult to be optimistic about it or say they did keep Peter Laviolette here. Um, you know, and they didn't make any other big changes, uh, that would have been one thing. But if the Caps in the offseason would have gone out and picked up a big forward, a big defenseman, then part of me is thinking at least uh, Peter has some tools in his tool bag now that he can go and help assemble a team to give them a chance of winning, right? Because it's still my belief that Peter did the best with what he had. Are there some things I would have changed about him? Of course, uh, his reluctance to get uh, to get younger. Uh, some people have said that he was always grumpy and never very, uh, you know, a personable or approachable. I just think that, you know, that's the kind of guy he is. I don't think that has necessarily anything to do with about his job with the Caps. That just is who he is, you know, intrinsically as a head coach. But I am excited about the prospect of a new coach and can they get 
can they squeeze more juice out of the orange that is the Capitals? Uh, because we want to be competitive next season. I don't want it to be a Nationals rebuild where we're talking about this team being competitive several years from now. I want this team to be competitive next season. A head coach, maybe some key additions, some key subtractions could be the formula for the success of this team. All right, once again, thank you for joining me on this weekend edition of Locked On Capitals. Once again, make sure and hit that follow or subscribe button as I have many Great interview set up. I have John Walton, Mike Vogel. Next week, I have Roman Stubbs on. We'll have Matt Wyrick to do wrap-ups here in the offseason. So it is going to be exciting, of course. We'll have you covered all summer long when it comes to the draft, when it comes to free agency. So make sure and be locked on, locked on capitals. Hit that follow or subscribe button on your podcatcher of choice. Then also head on over to YouTube and hit subscribe so we can get those subscribers up, up, up. And I have you guys to thank. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.